Hi everyone in the world of cloud computing and welcome to episode 34 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about the Australian government has struck a deal with IBM to provide a one billion Australian dollar five year technology service to accelerate the uptake of blockchain, artificial intelligence and quantum computing in the public sector. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips for adopting blockchain. Hi Dave, it's great to see you on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. And yet another article where the, the uh, title is Embedding Blockchain. <laughs> we love blockchain. I think Australia is really embracing blockchain. The world is uh, embracing blockchain. But, you know, we love this shiny object blockchain. It's not going away. I think there's uh, an event every weekend or literally every other day of the week uh, where you can go to a blockchain expo or seminar or something like that. So I'm, I'm really pleased we're talking about it. I think we will be talking about it as a, an ongoing thing because, you know, the Australian government's invested so much money into it with IBM. So, I mean, it's a great opening question, Dave. Does this mean that blockchain is now mainstream in Australia? Yeah, I think it is, and it's not really mainstream everywhere, but if you look at like, the skyline of Sydney and the skyline of Melbourne, you know, the tallest buildings in that skyline are going to be the banking industry, uh, at least owned by some kind of financial institution. And those are the folks that are embracing blockchain. And, and it's kind of funny, they've been dealing with very heavyweight, very proprietary transactional systems over the years, and here's something that's fairly simple. You know, lots of entities come to an agreement that a transaction is is legit. It goes through, and we just by the uh, you know kind of number of entities that it's linked into, we're able to validate the transactions being true, and we're able to you know move the money and things like that. This is something that should have been there you know 20 years ago. You know, in doing uh, some financial transaction systems, you know, back in the day when I was in the integration business, it was just seemed like a heavyweight, very procedure based. Uh, you know, very tough, expensive kind of way of doing transactions. And, you know, here we have something that's fairly easy. And so the banks, if they adopt this, this would be a revolution in the way in which we can clear trades and clear financial transactions. We also have uh, healthcare uh, derivatives of this. We have integration. You know, we have other kind of areas we're able to leverage where we're trying to, in essence, process information in a secure and kind of a durable way. And I think that Australia saw this being the fact that uh, their major industry is banking uh, as a way in which they could leapfrog some of the other, um, you know, banks in other countries, and they're doing it, you know, to their, you know, to their credit. And so just the fact of the matter is they're spending, you know, $1 billion five-year technology service to accelerate uptake in blockchain and AI and quantum computing in the public sector, you know, this is something where they're, they're investing in it. So what they're saying is blockchain's real. We know how to use it. We have the industry to make it happen. And by the way, we're putting a billion dollars uh, to bet the fact that we're going to go ahead and make a, make hay in the space and building the infrastructure. So that's what we need. And it's not happening in the States, but it is happening in Australia. It's the economy is smaller, GDP is smaller, you know, yet they're leading us in the blockchain space. So congratulations, you're sitting in a very innovative place. Yeah, absolutely. And like I always say, 100%, Australia does seem to be leading the way with uh, with blockchain. Other industries, though, within the States or the, the rest of the world, and you've been around the world pretty recently, you know, doing a lot with Deloitte. So from a, from your position and putting your sort of Deloitte head on, was it as it were, in a blockchain environment, what other industries do you think Australia could learn from with embracing blockchain? Uh, I think a manufacturing industry and, and leveraging blockchain for transaction systems, inventory control systems, the ability to create kind of, you know, kind of lightweight transactions such as buying, you know, goods and services that are going to be, uh, you know, where the trades are cleared online, you know, in a matter of seconds using blockchain's ability to um, make sure they're secure and reliable and durable and things like that. Huge um, healthcare. The ability to kind of clear healthcare trades that are going on it, it always behooves me when i you know deal with the healthcare system how long it takes for people to send me a bill and why it can't be electronic and you know i get paper bills in the mail still things like that the ability to kind of deal with these very lightweight that should be very inexpensive transactions you know in a very inexpensive way um, and then finally i think it's going to be the retail business so when you think about the retail sector, that's another area of growth. I mean, people are buying very expensive, durable goods, you know, such as automobiles and motorcycles and washer and dryers, things like that. 
that they may want to clear with a blockchain trade, you know, versus some sort of a credit card transaction. And I think that's going to be a cheaper way to do it going forward for both the retailer and for the people who are buying the goods. And so we're, we're coming on to these different applications as we're kind of peeling the onion back on what blockchain is. There's a lot of confusion between where does blockchain step in, where does cryptocurrency step out, but where, where do you see that being coming in and where, where do you see blockchain becoming the norm? I think blockchain is going to become invisible to us as people who are consumers and retailers in the market. And so if banks are doing blockchain well, if healthcare companies are doing blockchain well, retailers, manufacturers, it just becomes part of the infrastructure. So it's the way in which we clear trades. And you know, if you look at that aspect of it, it's not this big, you know, very, you know, sexy thing. This new technology is going to change the world. We're just kind of doing things differently and better than we did before. And I think the success or failure of this technology is going to be dependent on how much we don't see it. And so if I'm unaware that blockchain is clearing my trades, but I know it's costing me zero or almost nothing to clear those trades, then blockchain has a benefit. If blockchain is blowing up and it has outages and we're you know running into you know, hackery that's going on in the blockchain space, and then, then it's going to have a harder time. So, you know, my my advice to people who are, you know, doing anything with new technology is to become invisible with it. So make it so easy to use that people don't realize that it's really kind of powering what's behind the scenes. And I think if blockchain is able to do that, it's going to be a success. So the less we know about it, the less we talk about it in the next few years, uh, the more success and the more money blockchain is going to make us. Yeah, absolutely. And it leads us on nicely to our your top three tips for adopting blockchain this week. So Dave, we'd love to hear your top three tips. Sure thing. You know, look for the value of blockchain and watch for the silly derivative use cases out there. It seemed like when blockchain first came on the on the horizon, I was work, do, working a lot of projects where I was, you know, doing things with blockchain that I shouldn't necessarily have been doing. And what I used to tell my clients is we're, we're, we're do, using this in kind of a way that's an unnatural act and we should you know, understand that as we go into it. And I think that they worked and you can always make things work with enough money and time, um, but in certain instances they shouldn't be done. So make sure to create a business case you know, for what you're using with blockchain. And the fact of the matter is you have to have an as-is case, as-is state, a to-be state, and make sure that there's going to be a significant amount of profit and cost saving that's going to occur when you move from the as-is to the to-be. People have a tendency to miss that, and therefore blockchain gets, gets uh, placed in all kinds of silly problem domains that if you don't have an adequate use case for what you're looking to do, it shouldn't be leveraged. And then finally, you know, keep security as a systemic concept. The fact of the matter is blockchain does not become secure into itself, even though it does have an innate security protocol into it where it has everybody that can agree upon a trade, things like that. However, you still have to deal with encryption, you still have to deal with compliance, you still have to deal with other sorts of security services that are basically come along for the ride with blockchain. If you're unable to do that, you're gonna have an unsecure system. It may be leveraging blockchain, um, but you're gonna have some vulnerabilities there you need to address. Great three tips there. So uh, another, another fantastic, insightful show on blockchain. We love blockchain. We love blockchain. <laughs> Excellent. Dave, thanks for being part of the Australia show this week and giving up your, your Sunday evening. We're filming. That's awesome. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos with your colleagues and friends. And remember, David's on Twitter and there should be little Twitter graphics there as well now, um, which is da uh, David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Please check us out. We're on Instagram, Facebook, obviously YouTube. Check out the blogs that David and I write for the website as well. Everything's there. We're there to help you, basically. So if you need any support with uh, your, your IT requirements for staff, or consultancy, David and I you know, will do our best to help and you can reach out on Twitter or email us, that's awesome. So again, thanks for watching and until next week.